Okay, so our second movie in the reviews is Insurgent. And as was quite cleverly pointed out by John on the Preston FM show, that's not technically its name. Its real name, and I use the word real in inverted commas, is Divergent Series Insurgent, which is done in a way that suggests that the filmmakers, that the producers rather, don't trust us, the audience, to understand that this is a sequel to Divergent. It is, and I have to say, in the interest of editorial transparency, I didn't see the original Divergent movie. I was trying to see it before seeing this, so at least I'd have some kind of context to it, because this is one of those young, adult, teenage, fiction, sci-fi movies, much in a similar kind of vein to Twilight and The Hunger Games and uh, Maze Runner, and they have very complex, convoluted plots, so I needed to know. I couldn't exactly throw myself into this but sadly I had to, and it's of course upon reflection that I did find somewhere I could have watched it fairly cheaply, so whatevs, we'll just go along with it. So, whereas the Spongebob Squarepants movie was very, very easy to surmise, very, very easy to discuss its plot, this one isn't so much, and is a little bit harder, seeing as I've never seen the previous Insurgent movies, so if you're like me and not seen it, the story goes a little like, like this. It is the far future, and due to war and reasons which are dumb, the entire human race has been divided into several different groups, several different factions, depending on what they should be doing with their life. It's basically a caste system. It, they, it, they do a simulated test, and depending on the results in that, they will be assigned a career, a faction to live in. If they're particularly creative and artistic, then they may become a carpenter if they're particularly strong and practical they may become a police officer but there are certain people who do not fit into any of those categories they are known as divergents and the divergents are being hunted down by the evil janine who wants to use them to unlock a special cube which can only be unlocked by a divergent and that cube is from their founders who divided up humanity into different factions due to reasons which having watched the movie don't make a whole lot of sense to me and in reality don't make sense in any kind of logic whatsoever but I'm not going to talk about those because of spoilers uh the this movie is Beatrix and everybody running away from Janine to not get captured and not to be experimented on. That's pretty much the story as succinctly as I possibly can do. It is convoluted, it is silly, it is dumb, but that is the story as is. Now I have to say, until I saw Spongebob, this was the funniest movie that I'd seen since Shaun the Sheep. There are a great many things about it which are just simply hilarious. Certainly on a filmmaking perspective and to a certain degree writing. That's not to say this movie is intentionally funny, it isn't. It is teen drama, young adult fiction. It's supposed to be serious, it's supposed to be taken seriously, even though there are plenty of creative decisions which don't make a whole lot of sense and are just wholly illogical even within the logic of the movie they don't make a lot of sense i will say something on the movie's favor that when you cut away the moments which were just laugh out loud stupid there are there is a story there are ideas there which by the end of the movie i was interested in and by the end of it i was curious to see where this story was this story would go it oddly enough kind of makes me want to see the sequel it kind of makes me want to see the original movie to kind of understand a little bit more about this world even though for to be frank and honest with you i enjoyed it more because of the stupid moments and necessarily the real moments the creative moments because the creative moments are stupid this is a movie which has a horrible issue with it trying to think it's big and clever that it has this great multifaceted world when in frank honesty it really really doesn't one of the major issues i have with the movie is that it doesn't quite figure out what the divergence should be the way that it's made out in the trailers the way that it's made out in certain posters is that the divergence have some kind of power that they have almost like an x-men jason Bourne level of ability that they can knock out an entire army of guards that they can uh, jump out of 10 story buildings and be perfectly fine when in reality they can't they're just people who for whatever reason can't be categorized into a certain group they have no powers they have no secret abilities and the whole concept of divergence and them being divergent is created due to a plot contrivance which once again doesn't make a whole lot of sense 
and I can't really go into because it's a massive spoiler. At no point do you ever feel that the insurgent is a real thing, or rather the divergent is a real thing that has to be protected. That is, the, for, exa- for argument's sake, the next step in human evolution, because it really isn't. And there's nothing about it which feels at all physical, it feels psychological, but if it is psychological, how is it possible that they can determine how much somebody is divergent. There's one scene in the movie where they're going through a group of people and they've got a scanner which says how much of a percentage they are divergent. And if it is physical, then, yeah, that makes sense. But if it was physical, then they could do something interesting. They could do something Jason Bourne-esque, which sometimes happens. It depends what, who, whether or not the uh, person playing Beatrix is the original actor or the stunt person or not. There are plenty enough moments where it is the actress playing Beatrix who is punching people like, eh, 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 like young teenage girl who doesn't want to hurt somebody punch. In any case, the fact that I don't fully understand it after a two-hour movie is a problem. I, yeah, I'll put my hands up once again and say I didn't see the original movie. I haven't read the books, but this movie, at least to its credit, does try and explain what a divergent is and their significance, even though they never really make it feel significant. Even in the end game, after the big plot twist towards the end of it, it never makes you feel as though, oh, so that's what it's all about. That's why it's important. At the end of it, you are kind of scratching your heads feeling, well, the reason why the Divergent exists is because of X, Y, and Z, but then they, that means it isn't anything significant because that means it isn't, ah, my head, you know? Uh, the things I did enjoy aren't really stuff which is supposed to be intentionally funny stuff which isn't supposed to be intentionally goofy there are plenty of moments where stylistically and to a filmmaking perspective it just doesn't make any goddamn sense as i said earlier on the thing that determines what faction everyone's going to be in is a simulation and at one point in the movie beatrix has to be in a simulation and one of the simulations that she has to do is for the uh peacekeeping group i can't remember what their name is but they are the one which is symbolized by the uh wayne scales and she has to do that simulation now logic would dictate that seeing as it's a simulation based around law enforcement there would be something to do with law enforcement it would be her trying to foil a drugs gang or something like that whatever it may be it would be something to do with law enforcement but in reality, it's her running after a flying house, which is on fire, which has the ghost of her dead mother in it, whilst angry crows fly around it. It makes no sense whatsoever. And I suppose you could say that, yeah, it's because she has some grievances towards her mother. But still, if this is supposed to be a police training simulation, it doesn't make any sense. I know that I'm, uh, there's great stuff that I don't understand. I know there's going to be fans of the book and the series that are going to be saying that I'm an idiot. But to me, as a casual film goer, I just don't get it. There's another moment which was laugh out loud funny that I had to bite my fist to stop me from laughing. It's a moment where a character meets up with their mother and when that is revealed both me and somebody who i presume is a fangirl in the audience both went <gasps> at the same time she went <gasps> because of plot relevance i went <gasps> because the mother and the son look more or less the same age so unless she had the son when she was a fetus i just don't understand it i really really don't there are loads of odd silly moments that make me laugh that i would like to recommend the movie for but as a whole entity it's not a so bad it's good movie it is an average movie a convoluted movie with silly moments in it so if you are take along to see it against your will if with a boyfriend or a girlfriend then you may find some enjoyment in that they may elbow you here for taking the piss out of their beloved property but still i simply can't get behind it on a serious level even though by the end of it, I was enjoying it ever so slightly. Because there is so much of it, however, which is just illogical, which is dumb. It tries to be big and clever, but in actual fact, it's mistaking a clever script for a convoluted one, which is a sad thing to say. Maybe it would have made more sense to me had I seen the original, had I read the books, but still, it does try to make you understand it it just fails spectacularly to make it feel like something. It can't determine whether or not a divergent is somebody who is physically different or psychologically different. 
if it's psychological, then why is there, ev- is there evidence suggesting it's physical? And if it is physical, why is it that our lead character, who is 100% divergent, never really feels like much of a physical threat to our bad guys? And why is it that it never feels as though her potential capture would be something of great danger to the resistant fighters or anything like that? At no point do I ever feel connected by that. Do I ever feel like I fully understand it? Which is a massive problem. means I can't honestly recommend it to you as a good movie. If you take a long to see it, you may enjoy it for the silly moments. If you're a fan of the series, however, you may enjoy it. If you're a fan of the series, it doesn't have anything in it which is stupid or necessarily terrible. But, you know, I'm not a fan of it. You may love it, you may hate it, but in any case, there's nothing about it which makes it a terrible movie. There's nothing about it which I can say, avoid this movie at all costs, because it simply isn't. It's just a little bit confused, which is all I can really say about it at the end of the day. He doesn't really know what it wants to be, but what it is can be good if it can not otherwise just be silly. Still, that's all I can say. All I can really say. It's not a must-see, but if you're going to see it, maybe, just maybe they'll enjoy it. If you have a warped sense of humour like I do. If you're the kind of person that likes watching so bad the good movies, then you may get some enjoyment out of it. Otherwise, you'll be bored rigid.